is at stake. That's where her home is. That's where she misses when she's traveling. Starting off the year a little bit better than last year, winning more matches. Miskina last year had a lot of difficulties on court and off the court. This year, during this tournament, she has not dropped the set. Chuck Vitazzi, in the round of 16, fellow Russian, easily three and two. And her coach, Jens Gerlach, told me earlier that this is the best he's seen her play all year. And he really felt that she had a legitimate shot to beat Sharapova tonight. A couple break points, leaning into that last forehand. That's going to be the telling side for Sharapo to see if she's sharper than she's been all week. played and the year-ending championship in LA was a watershed match really for Sharapova and it consolidated her as a major player as I've already said I think this in some measure is a watershed match but this one's more for Miskina if she can beat Sharapova then she rejoins that elite circle Miskina's goal flip to get back to where she was. And she was at number two in the world after her French Open title in September of 04. In her highest ranking, she's dropped now to outside the top 10. She's 12. Game. There it goes wrong. First game of break is served for Sharapova. At one time, we had five Russians in the top 10. And now we have three. Miskina is at 12. Kuznetsova, who's in the semifinals already, is 14. And she'd like to get back also to the top of women's tennis. Petrova's had some consistent results. That's why you see her at seven. And Dementieva as well. Mary Jo, as you take a look at this draw, you said that Sharapova, at least uh, Miskina, had some challenges on and off the court. Um, can you chronicle those for us? Well, last year her mom was very, very ill, and for a while she didn't tell anybody about it, and you could just see her on the court uh, breaking down. I mean, she got emotional so many times when she wasn't playing well, and finally she told the press that her mom was, was very, very sick, and that was distracting her. She really couldn't focus on the court. Her mom thankfully is much better now. Her father has been uh, traveling with her the last couple weeks. He hadn't traveled with Moschina in about a year or two. Father Andre drove her every day to Moscow Spartak Club when she was just a kid. She said that she never felt pressure, that tennis was fun for her. She liked to play soccer as a child. The parents played socially at the club.
Lawrence, the coach of Mesquina. And is that Anna Kornikova next to him? That is, the left behind of him. Screen. And then her dad, Andre, to the right. But Kornikova has been supporting Mesquina, was at her last match, went to the players' party with her. Kornikova. I remember it well. She I beat remember four top ten players and then lost to Venus Williams. Wasn't it that year she got to the semi final at Wimbledon? That's right, she was only 16. Thirty fifteen. thinks of the fame and for I know Kornikova made a lot of money off the court. And I'm sure she's still making it. But not the kind of Sharapova money. I wonder what she thinks about that. Yeah, I think it's got to be frustrating. I mean, Sharapova's only 18. She won Wimbledon when she was 17, and it was just an overnight sensation. Started getting endorsements left and right, Sharapova. This young lady, and she's still young, Anna Kornikova, had a lot to do with the resurgence of Russian women's tennis? Absolutely. I mean, and I think you'll, you'll hear it from Sharapova and Miskina and the, and the rest of them that she opened a lot of doors and really brought a lot of attention to women's tennis. But uh, there have been many comparisons. Sharapova was the first one to say, don't compare me because I, I'm here to do my job and, and to be the best. And obviously she wins a lot more than Kornikova did and Kornikova never won a tournament, but she was in the top 10 and she had the potential. He saves a break point. Yeah, there was talk about when Dementieva got to the semi-final of the U.S. Open, that is this the next Anna Kornikova, remember? That's right, in 2000. Beat Lee Na in the second round, 2-4, and four, was down 4-1 in that second set, and then saved eight set points against the Italian, and then really struggled against Kirilenko. The third set she put together, though. And it was a little bit like this game. It was streaky for Sharapova. She would play a, a good point and then just miss an, a ball out of nowhere. And I have to believe a little bit of, of it is mental fatigue. She's played a lot of tennis this year. Of course, coming off the big win at the Pacific Life about a, over a week ago. We're fond of saying <coughs> that uh, Roger Federer is always playing on Saturday and Sunday, but the truth is, I know it's been a while um, that she's won a tournament, not not including the one last week, last weekend in um, Indian Wells at the Pacific Life. But she's always in the last she's few always, days. Yeah, usually on Saturday she's there. Yuri, her dad and coach, and Michael Joyce looking on. Sharapova, semi-finalist at the Australian, close match with Justine Anna Arden. She went down. It was to Martina Hingis at the Pan Pacific in Tokyo, but that was a semi-final. Beat Hingis in Dubai. Lost to Anna Arden in that championship match and then won in Indian Wells. even in the first set. Brad 
Brad Gilbert at courtside. Brad, you got us? Yeah, I saw Maria about 20 minutes before the match, and she looked really intense. You know, the whole Russian battle thing. I think she definitely wants to get the better of Mishkina. Mishkina seems so relaxed, but for her to have any success tonight, it's all about the bicycle. She's going to have to be moving and getting everything back. I also think she needs a lot of variety of shots, some angles, some loops, you know, not giving Maria that ball at her waist level. And also in the slower conditions tonight, Maria can be able to hit through the court more. slower conditions, Maria's going to be able to hit through the court more. I thought the slower conditions makes it less easy to hit through the ball. Well, I mean, she's such a big hitter, so I think maybe she was spraying more balls in the day with the court playing faster. I think the slower condition will help her ground strokes. run more balls down when the conditions are slower. She's able to track at least one or two extra balls. Mary Jo, I'm really surprised Anastasia is throwing a first serve in at 72 miles an hour. I mean, she's got a bigger serve than that. Not much bigger. Her biggest weakness is her serve, for sure. Three serve games, three breaks. A serve is two games to one to Sharapova. She'll serve and we come back. We're live here at the NASDAQ in Miami. There's no such ESPN2's presentation of the NASDAQ 100 Open. Brought to you by the NASDAQ 100 Index Tracking Stock. Ticker symbol QQQQ. Mercedes-Benz. Located on the web at MBUSA.com. And Sony Ericsson. Proud worldwide title sponsor of the Sony Ericsson WTA Tour. NASDAQ 100 Open continuing. It's Sharapova trailing or leading to one. Love Miskina was a kid. She spent uh, her early years, 12 years at the Spartak Club, which has indoor and outdoor clay courts. She spent hours there every day after school. In fact, she played at the same time with uh, Anna Kornikova, who is watching her tonight, and Elena Dementieva. They are, remember they played the final of the French and they are and were then really good friends.
says she would like to forget is the Athens Olympic semi-final when she led Justine Anna Arden, who had come off of a long layoff, to eventually win that. But she led 5-1 in the final set and lost. And as we've been saying for the Russians and the Chinese, there's nothing more valuable, including a Grand Slam, than an Olympic medal. Net. She was so distraught after losing that semi-final to NRD that she had to go play for the bronze medal against Alicia Malik and just mentally was not there. Game, Sharapova. Sharapova holds, so she's got three games to one. Bring, bring your, as Brad Gilbert would say, hard hat and lunch pail tomorrow, folks, because we've got a solid day of tennis coming your way. One o'clock Eastern time, Emily Merezmos, Verlana Kuznetsova. At three o'clock, Andy Roddick in action against David Ferrer of Spain. At seven Eastern, Federer and Blake, and then Tatiana Golova versus the winner of this match. Pretty good lineup. Love 15. One difference I'm noticing just early on with Mesquina's game is the unforced errors. When Mesquina won the French Open in 04, and when she got the two in the world, she was beating people because she was so consistent. She ran a lot of balls down and didn't miss. 15 0. At the French, she beat Venus Williams and Capriati and basically just stood back there, got balls deep anticipated well and, and let them self-destruct. So far in this match, Mesquina already has 12 unforced errors. Only one winner. Patient skills. She read this forehand up the line, and then her backhand is her better ground stroke. She really was firm on that passing shot. So I think that's the goal for her tonight. Game, Mesquina. Running around that forehand to hit the backhand to emphasize your point. Three, two. Sharapova's got the break in the first set. She'll serve. Start to finish, too good. Net for serve. Somebody like Miskina, mm -hmm. you've got to make sure that you've got a good approach. 
still not so comfortable at the net, Sharapova. But you don't get better unless you try it, unless you do it in matches. Signed up for the doubles at all? Maria Sharapova. I don't think so. 15, 30. Wouldn't this be a thing to do to maybe help her with the volleys? I always thought doubles helped singles tremendously because you get to practice what you've been working on still in a competitive way. But a lot of top players opt not to play to save themselves physically for the singles. is that the women will probably, Sonia Erickson and WTA2 will do the same thing the men have, which is shorten the doubles matches with no ad scoring and play a super tiebreaker for the third set, which will, I, I really think, in the long run, encourage more of the singles players to play doubles knowing that they will have a finite period of time for the match to last. Where have you been, Brad? You could go walk about? I went on a walkabout. I actually found Anna Konnikova and asked her if we could talk to her. She said if she was playing, she wouldn't want someone doing an interview on the stand. So she's here supporting her friend, and she goes, I don't want to do it. But I'm actually standing here next to Mario Antic, who's kind of checking this out. He's playing afterwards. down to winning the game for two Sharapova. Last year, some right? Yeah. She can do that again, and I she played. So. She played some exhibition matches. Yeah. But some charity events. I'm surprised she didn't talk to Brad. But no WTA tour matches anymore. shot and I like the strategy but she doesn't she hasn't perfected it yet and also again if she didn't start trying it in a match then it's going to be tough because in practice everything's so much easier there's no pressure you can you know make your shots whenever you want but these are the types of matches where you need to work on the stuff that you've been trying in practice and you know she has not been making those drop shots at this event Maybe by the time she gets on the red clay, 30, they'll be a little bit better. Well, also, too, I, I think 
when she hits those drop shots, she's trying to hit them with two hands sometimes. It's a, that's an easier shot to hit, you know, with one hand. It's a tough two-hand chip drop shot. That last one sort of was with one. She let go at the end. It's just not a natural shot for, for Sharapova. Just like the one-handed slice is not a natural shot. But she's been working on that too. shot that she can hurt Sharapova consistently with, so I don't think she can afford to have a lot of unforced errors. Serving here, leading four games to three, one break. In the first set, they have traded breaks and then some two breaks for Sharapova, one for Miskina so far. Fight and, and say, how What can do you, you think, Cliff? How, well, no, how can you say that uh, these are the kind of matches, as you said a, a game ago, that Sharapova can try like drop shots and shots that are not high percentage shots? Like these are unimportant matches to her. Well, no, but it's a quarterfinal, it's not the final. <laughs> Miskina connects well with his forehand up the line. A little less pressure in a quarter or semi than later on in the final. emotion Anastasia and berates her uh, her coach sometimes we haven't seen it tonight yet but she gets apparently the last couple of years always the award uh, among women for doing more for tennis off the court than anyone always ready to go swimming with the dolphins or make an appearance for the corporate group Confusing. <laughs> well, she's dating Alexander Stepanov now, who's an ice hockey star from Russia.
from the Skinner coming under the ball, but that was leads, five, way games, too deep. Three. If it was an attempted at drop shot, easy put away. 5-3, Sharapova. Mary Josh, Anastasia also seems so much more dangerous on the run when she, you know, she hit a couple winners down the line on the mm -hmm. forehand there. But in the middle of the court, she seems to play so much more conservative. And if you notice, Sharapova actually against her hits quite a bit up the middle, especially in the beginning of a rally. This is that one. Love the team. last time Sharapova played Mesquina, the only time she beat Mesquina, that was her strategy to, to hit hard up the middle and wait to be able to go out wide because Mesquina is so dangerous when she's on the run. That's a great shot. You know, she hit a good little dink. Maybe she could have covered down the line, but that's an outstanding get and a great up the line from Sharapova. She was a foot outside the doubles alley, Brad, when she made contact with that backhand. Sorry, Brad, go ahead. I was saying it was funny after that shot. It was a great shot. She looked up and gave her coach the first evil eye. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what did he do, Rob? You know, you two, you two are talking about how good uh, Anastasia Mosquito is running wide. I, I think that Sharapova is pretty good with that shot, the, the evidenced by that backhand down the line. set points now for Sharapova, but in the moving category, Mesquina definitely faster and quicker. No doubt. No doubt, but because Sharapova knows she's not the fastest, she goes for a lot when she gets stretched out wide. And for her, it's not a low percentage shot to go for the outright winner when she's out wide. Game First set percent. to Sharapova. Sharapova, six games to three. Very, very good display from Maria, former Wimbledon champion, as she wins it 6-3.